What it do, baby? This is your lovely Misty Stone, and you are tuning in to Real Tune TV, Spliff D T V. Legend. <laughs> hey, Real Tune, it's a real money in the room. For the people who don't know. Okay, yes. Let them know who we have in front of the camera. Well, honey, honey, I am your lovely Misty Stone. I happen to be an adult film star. I have been the pioneer of this industry for many, many years. Um, I'm an advocate for black um, excellence and fairness. And my name is Misty Stone. <laughs> That part, that part, Misty Stone, the legend. Yes, thank you. By the baby. way, thank you, baby. Um, but before we even get started, what what's new in your life? Uh, shoot, honestly, I've been doing a few mainstream movies. I did something for Warner Brothers just recently, and I also did uh, another movie with uh, it's called The Comeback Trail. Very small part. I play a black nun, but um, it's with Robert De Niro, Morgan Freeman. Tommy Lee Jones. So as long as I'm in a movie with them, I feel like I am doing spectacular. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> now you you do you are doing spectacular, doing better than most. You've outlast most, which is crazy. Um, it's very crazy. Yes, very crazy. Well, this is our first time um, getting a chance to sit down together. Yes. And so I want to take this opportunity to actually get to know you. Let's do it, baby. You know what I'm saying? And I know it's a lot to get to know. Oh, baby. Uh, <laughs> so I like to take it from the top. All right. So first off, where are you from? I am originally born and raised in Inglewood, California. That is where I was born. That's where I was raised. I spent half of my life in Omaha, Nebraska. I know it's crazy, but that's Omaha, where, Nebraska. Yes, that's where they sent me. I got a lot of family out there. That's where we cook our Thanksgiving meals. We get the good Omaha steaks, and that's how we eat. And that's what the f it is. So yeah, I'm an Omaha girl. Okay. <laughs> originally Inglewood. Now I live in Hollywood, and that's just what it is. So you're originally from Inglewood, California. Yes. And then I spent some time in Omaha, Nebraska, like I mentioned. And now I'm in Hollywood because I was getting tired of them in Inglewood robbing my black ass. Every time I'm going to set, they watching me and taking my rims, my beat out, my car. So I had to move to Hollywood, which I don't know if that's any better because there's a whole lot, bunch of homelessness. But right. it's a nice view of the Hollywood sign. <laughs> I can take a and look at the Hollywood sign. So that's awesome. We'll right. take it. Must be nice. Uh, it's all right. Well, how was it for you growing up in Inglewood? Uh, you know, I guess simple, regular hood shit. I, I, I don't really want to, shit, we, shit, we ain't gonna talk about family problems. I don't know. It was great. <laughs> My household was just great. You know. so, so your family was from Inglewood too? <laughs> yes, we are all Inglewood, baby. Okay. Mama, Grandpa, we had our house in Inglewood. That's where we grew up on over there, off of, across the street from Church's Chicken, 64th and La Brea, guys. Okay. <laughs> so that that started with your your grandparents, because Inglewood was a white neighborhood at one point. Was, before it was it? Yeah, before it was integrated. Okay, was that in the seventies? Because I was born in the eighties. So. Yeah, around the um, late sixties, early seventies. Okay, 70s. really? Didn't know um, that. I need to do some history and understand what happened to that neighborhood because it's all black now, baby. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Inglewood, uh, Hawthorne. And it's beautiful and growing because what we do in our community, which I noticed that I've gone to other hoods and I've been there, and I'm just like, damn, cause even in Omaha, these are shacks. Like it's disrespectful. The hoods are not manicured lawns. In Inglewood, we got manicured lawns. People really take care of their yards. We appreciate our neighborhoods. And when motherfuckers get rich and get money and have something to give back, they come back to Inglewood and actually give back. You heard about Nipsey Hussle, right? Yeah, right. we actually come back to our neighborhoods and give back. So that is why our neighborhoods grow and are fruitful with black excellence and uh, uh, and activities and resources and different things of that nature and our Lawns are manicured. <laughs> uh, it's always good to have green grass. Oh, right now. So, yeah, uh, I guess we're a little spoiled in Cali. Mm -hmm. But I think it's because we love our, for some odd apparent reason, people that leave the hood don't ever want to go back. But you got to go back to change it, baby. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just going to stay the same. Right. And that's your home. Why would you want your home to be uh, 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 just a raggedy ass place? Why would you want that? Mm-hmm. 
Right. Well, um, did you grow up mom and dad? I grew up grandpa and mama. Okay. Brother, sister, grandpa, mama, and baby. Baby bear. Baby bear. So, <laughs> um, when, when you were growing up, you know, you're from Los Angeles, um, were you affected by the gang banging in any way? Uh, I was so young. Was I really affected by it? Shit, not really. No, not exactly. My brother was a bit into it, very, not that much. <sighs> no, I, I didn't really pay attention to it. It wasn't a big deal, was it? Because I'm in the hood. It's my lifestyle. Am I really affected by it or is it just my life? So that may be the question. I don't think I was affected by it because it's regular to me. I did I wasn't no shooting in front of my face, if that's what you're asking me, baby. But no, it's just regular old hood life, baby. Yeah, it was just it it, it was what it was at that mm -hmm. time. It just is what it is, yeah. But as a child, no, I wasn't seeing somebody get shot in front of me. I might go to the store with a note from my grandpa from my grandpa or my mama asking, uh, could you give her some camel lights? <laughs> Remember back in the day, you could actually go to the cigarette store. I was like five or six and I could literally go there with a note. And yeah, I go back home with cigarettes. It's very interesting. Right. Can't right. do that anymore, though. Right. Absolutely. And better not do that anymore. What Absolutely. was my mama and my grandpa thinking? Lord bless they so. A different time. <laughs> different time. Yes. Sure. Yes. So uh, around what age do you get off the porch? Get off the porch. Yeah. Oh, shit. You're going deep. I don't know. When did I get off the porch? Uh, I had to be in before the street lights was on. So you mean like out there in the world all by myself being bad? I don't know. I met this pimp and it got serious. I don't f know. How old was I? 16, 17, baby. Oh my goodness. I feel my heart is racing now. You asking me. I'm getting hot. Is it getting hot in here? It's getting a little. It's getting a little. <laughs> you asking me questions. I, yeah, I was uh, I, 16, 17, what, I decided to venture out. Mm, famous. Famous. <laughs> okay, so around 16, you meet a pimp named Famous. I did. Mm. And, and this is after my mother had moved us to uh, a suburban area, uh, Fontana, Rancho Fontana. So y'all leave the hood. Kind of like Friday, cuz. We leave the hood, go to Rancho. Bam. I meet a pimp in Rancho. <laughs> Out of all places, not in the hood where we were at. Yeah, when in the suburban area where I was trying to get a better life. Yeah, that's where I met him. What intrigued you by famous? I was young. I was walking down the street. He had a gank of money. He was coming from the bank. He was trying to floss. I guess he was looking for a pen or I don't know what he was looking for. His phone to get my number and a whole bunch of money just fell out. I said, oh my goodness, and this was a nice car, I thought, and then he picked me up in another nice car that was talking and had a satellite and cable TV and all this stuff in it. It was way before people even had all that stuff. Like, it was really nice. Had a satellite on his car. It was just, yeah, what, uh, glitter and gold. That's what attracted me to him. Silly. Mm. <laughs> hey, real tone, it's the real money in the room.